Welcome back everybody. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Now I'm gonna switch back to doing some framing. Got bored of it, did some other stuff, and I've been putting off building this section of the master bedroom closet because I thought I would need the area, this volume here, and I may still need it to get sheets of drywall around this corner and into this room. I wanted to, to quick discuss my plan, my plan of attack here, because I want this doorway, this wall, to be as small as possible. And there are some things you have to account for when you're laying out your framing, like the thickness of the drywall that goes on this wall, the thickness of your trim boards, how it's gonna look, the, the rough opening. Here's an example of my drawings. 30 inches is the rough opening and seeing what I got to work with. So basically the first wall, the doorway, is gonna look just like that. One other thing that makes this wall a little unique is that the ceiling is at an angle, halfway up the wall, and then it gets uh, parallel to the floor, or it's supposed to be parallel to the floor, nothing in here is parallel. Gets parallel to the floor, the other halfway through the wall. These are 10 foot two by fours. Put down in the comments how much a 10 foot two by four costs where you live today. It's been going up, it's been going down. I thought I was paying $10. I was like, holy cow, that's a lot for a two by four. $10 and some change. They had dropped just overnight. They can't even keep up with the price tags. And these were only about $6.34. Like that, we've got a doorway. doorway. Today's video is sponsored by Truebill. If you've been following me very long, you know that I have two YouTube channels. And my second one is based on being self-employed, making more money, spending less money, what to do with the money that we make. The whole goal is to become financially secure. And today's video sponsor, Truebill, I think is a valuable tool to achieve that. Truebill is an all-in-one finance app. The personal finance manager allows you to manage your subscription, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. The thing I like about Truebill is it's all on your phone right in front of you, and it does it for you. To do all these things on your own is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of research and a lot of dedication. So with a few taps on your screen, you can get Truebill to do all this stuff for you. You can cancel unwanted subscriptions. Truebill safely and securely identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscription for you with just a tap. You can lower your bills. Truebill can negotiate bills for you, from internet bills to credit card bills. You can budget like a boss. You can set up budgets that automatically monitor your spending by category, get friendly notifications when you've exceeded them. You can visualize your spend to earn ratio by month, by quarter, or by year. You can download it for free by going to truebill.com slash the handyman or by clicking the link in the description below. Now we head back to framing. We're doing the closet? I think we're doing the closet. Go back to framing the closet. So I originally built this bathroom wall as your standard outside corner. So we've got an 
a screwing or nailing surface for drywall on the outside and the inside. So you can see this board got the face towards the bathroom. It makes the perfect corner to nail your drywall to. But now that I added this in here, I don't have an inside corner uh, in this wall situation. So later on down the road, right before drywall, I'll come through and do what's called back out framing, where you put in all the blocking that you need for drywall. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking in this video, or maybe I'm not. I haven't edited it yet. Sometimes I just edit out all my chit chat and just do like a time lapse. So when you're building in an old house like this, and oftentimes newer houses, 70s, 80s, 90s, and today should be a radio host. Nothing's square, nothing's parallel. So this floor is not perfectly level. That ceiling is not perfectly level. That wall and that wall are not parallel. That wall and that wall are not parallel. I think you get what I'm saying. Nothing is, is square or gonna make a 90 degree angle. So what you like to do is put your goofy walls in areas that people aren't gonna see from specific vantage points. In this room, the main vantage point is right at that doorway and right here in front of the bathroom. So when someone comes to look at this, it'll probably be staged. There'll be a bed here, there'll be dressers and stuff like that. They're gonna come over in that corner and they're gonna look this way. And then they're gonna stand here, look into the bathroom. They're gonna step into the bathroom and look there. Uh, this is also important if you're gonna live in a house and show it to people. From that spot there, what I'm trying to do is make sure things look like there's 90 degree angles and things are you know perpendicular and parallel to each other. This closet is the perfect place to hide some things. So I can scooch this wall like this or like this so that this here looks like a perfect 90 and the wall that I'm going to put here, no one's going to see it unless they are on the other side of the bed. So you can't see this angle from the doorway, from the bathroom. So I can play with this here too a little bit. Down here on the ground, and this wall here is exactly 36 inches. I cut this bottom plate 36 inches. So a way to get a large square, I think it's Beyonce. Beyonce. Sorry about that. I, I told her not to call me at work anymore. Uh, so here we got just a square. Looks good, but is it really good? Some people that watch might not be aware of the three, four, five triangle. So this wall is exactly three feet. And what I've done is from this little intersection here, I've measured out exactly four feet. The distance from this mark to this mark over here, the edge of the wall, should be exactly five feet if this makes a 90 degree corner. So we've got the inside corner right there on my mark. To the inside edge, we are, I'd call that an eighth off. So if I wanted to, you go just like that. Now we are 100% square. Got a nice 90 degree angle there. So I'm gonna take my measurement from the bottom of this wall to here, this wall here, either pointing into the room or pointing out into the garage. Do I need to make this measurement smaller or bigger so that it fits here? If, if it's starting to dive off into the garage, that's fine. I'll, I'll make my perfectly square rectangle, put it here and just shim the top a little bit. It's not gonna be off more than a half an inch from floor to ceiling. Once in a while you hit 
something and you're gonna break the nail off inside the gun and take it apart. Top of this wall kind of dives in this way and what I don't want to do is nail this in and suck that wall on a level and then it'll be hard to get the door aligned in the doorway. So I'm going to put this shim that I just conveniently had located right there and check level on that wall over there before I nail that in up top. Make sense? So we're going to take you into the closet. Go in, the door swings against this wall here. Keep in mind the door is only going to go up to about here. So that leaves a lot of room for seasonal shelving way up high. That's 10 foot ceiling as well as seasonal shelving up to here. Shelf across the top. Two, two long bars. This is a eight foot a little over eight foot by four feet. So you'll have a bar across the top and a bar across here. And this bar can stop. So if you've got your long gowns and whatnot, can hang over there. Lots of options, but you're gonna have at least 14 to 15 lineal feet of hanging. Uh, you've got this end wall here where you could also do long hanging there. You could also put a dresser in here. You could do a, a full shoe rack on this wall here. Whatever floats your boat. And I'm sure we're gonna find out what they choose somewhere down the road. So this doorway might end up turning into a secret passage out to the garage. Not sure yet. So that'll be interesting to see what we build in the garage to conceal the secret passage of course, all this here has been disconnected. Those are just stuck in there. That has got to get pulled off and we'll just get covered up with drywall. I'm moving right along, getting close to drywall. 